Hello, class. You know about Abraham Lincoln. You've seen a penny. You've seen a $5 bill. You've seen Mount Rushmore. You celebrated President's Day. Him and George Washington are set aside amongst presidents that are universally known that are taught about in elementary school. And even though Abraham Lincoln is the president in which the most biographies have been written about, there are still elements of his life that are shrouded in mystery and that people will have disagreements about. Abraham Lincoln was born February 12, 1809. He will die April 15, 1865, at the age of 56. So, when it comes to home state, a lot of people want to claim Lincoln. Okay? Now, physically, he was born in Kentucky. He's going to make himself a career for himself in Illinois. And Illinois loves him, the land of Lincoln. And then, of course, you know. Um, now, for his religion, I have stated Christian. This is something of an enormous scholarly dispute. A Abraham Lincoln is not someone that had a strong denominational view. He used scripture all the time in his speeches, in, his, in the language he used. He used it very effectively. He knew scripture well. But the actual religious views of Abraham Lincoln are somewhat unknowable. Um, and there are some that have made compelling arguments that he had no real religious beliefs whatsoever. So, we leave us with, he was kind of a soft Christian, probably believed in, in, in God, but it would probably be very non-committal about his answers. So, when it comes to this, uh, his wife is Mary Todd. Again, uh, who's going to come from a slave-holding family. His son is Robert Todd Lingley. He is, he is more than one son. Uh, but his famous son is going to be Robert Todd Lincoln, who is going to have his own political career as Secretary of War, as later Minister to the United Kingdom, and he is going to be near three different presidential assassinations. All right, so Abraham Lincoln is going to be the first member of the Republican Party to be elected president. The Republicans, a party that come into the fold opposing slavery after the collapse of the Whig Party. Now, when he runs for re-election, he runs under the National Union ticket um, with a Republican as president and a Democrat as vice president. His term of office is March 4th, 1861 to April 15th, 1865. His vice president, his first one is Hannibal Hamlin, who's just a regular Republican. His second one is Andrew Johnson, who is a Southern Democrat and the only Southern Democratic senator that did not secede. So, um, and a profound impact would happen on U.S. history if Abraham Lincoln had kept Hannibal Hamlin as his vice president. Instead of replacing it with Andrew Johnson, someone who he disagreed with strongly on a large variety of issues. So, as a young man, Abraham Lincoln is going to fight Native Americans in the Black Hawk War. Uh, as a reward for this, he will be given two plots of land in Iowa. Um, there's no real evidence he ever visited them, but he did pay some taxes on them. Uh, and then he's going to be a lawyer. Now, he's going to get elected in Illinois as a Whig to the House of Representatives. And he's going to do this um, in 
1846. He's going to oppose the Mexican-American War, and he's going to very briefly overlap in Congress with John Quincy Adams. However, he, he, he only serves a single term in the 1840s in, in the House. He is going to run for the Senate a couple times, eh, most famously against Douglas. Uh, ultimately not get that. He will get the nomination for the Republican Party in 1860. And again, he did not run specifically on abolishing slavery. However, the South still reacted how the South reacted. Secession happened. He became president of the United States. And originally, his number one goal was the preservation of the Union. Later, this changes to a view that slavery cannot be brought back after the war. So, as famously, as he makes the Emancipation Proclamation. And what the Emancipation Proclamation did is that it declared states it uh it declared states in open rebellion their slaves to be free. Now, at the time, there aren't many people that are slaves uh, that are under Union control um, during the war that were affected by this. But it does mean, as Union makes gains, more slaves are being free. He wins re-election, 1864, and right after the war ends, he's assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. Um, if they had the medical technology of today, they certainly could have saved him. And so this leaves a bunch of unknowns about how Lincoln would have approached Reconstruction. Um, he certainly would have approached it better than Andrew Johnson does. So, you know, Abraham Lincoln is just such an interesting figure because so much is known about him, yet not everything is agreed upon and people have vastly different views on him. And so he will continue as this very notable president who rose to the occasion in this very important part of our history. And that if it was anybody else, things may have turned out 